Welcome to another very special episode of the Big Footy Tiger Cast. It's a, a cast of thousands tonight that we've got on, including a few special guests. Our first guest has been on for a little while, but is a, a fan favourite. Rockadoc, welcome back to the show, mate. Thanks, Michael. Yeah, I suppose it's been a fair while, considering the history I've had with this show. But yeah, great to be back. Yeah, no, it's, I suppose it's just been a uh, matter. A lot of new hands have put their hand up to come on, which has been great. I suppose on the back of you know you guys doing all the hard yards coming on so but we always like to get our favorites back and uh, speaking of favorites this next man is another one of those who is i think the the crowd's really keen to hear from on a number of fronts tiger 71 welcome back mate yeah thanks um michaels and um you know let me just um add you know how fucking corrupt is the mro but we'll talk about that more later (laughs) straight off the bat no messing around uh that's (laughs) why we love you (laughs) And uh, our third guest, we've actually managed to get an opposition supporter in on late notice, but he does want his username to remain anonymous, which is fine by us. Uh, so Geelong supporter, welcome to the show. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, how are you, yeah, anonymous oh, I Geelong swear supporter? The, the way that pussy squealed, I reckon that's Gary Elbows, <laughs> mate. You could just tell. <laughs> or it could be Tommy Fatboy Hawkins. <laughs> No, it's definitely Chris Scott with the way he complains after his players get, you know, suspended. Oh, yes, ball. yeah. And Chris Scott, you know, fucking tells the MRO how they should make the decision. He's the only coach that will say that. Fucking, hey, not good. Any words, Geelong supporter? <laughs> what is that? What are you doing? <laughs> oh, Jesus. Okay, we're two minutes in. We've lost the plot already. Um, so a few big things have happened this week, and we will obviously touch on the Richmond stuff naturally, um, but the sacking of uh, Brennan Bolton from Carlton was something that probably caught everyone's attention this week, and, and I think he was a little bit harshly done by, I know his record's not the greatest, fellas, but Jesus, Soss has given him a shit list to work with, hasn't he? Well, mate, all I can say is suck shit Carlton, really. Um Yeah, look, I feel for Bolts. Um, he was a strange appointment, if we be honest, right? Um you know, too ultra happy. Um, I don't think he knew what he was walking into. And Colton, very similar to Richmond back in the uh, in our shit years. Actually, they're probably worse than what we were because, yeah, we were shit. But, you know, we won games at least. We didn't win many games, but we've won more games than I have. But they, their whole the infrastructure as a club, they believe they're, oh, we're Colton. We're a famous jumper. We're this, this. No, you're not. You're irrelevant. Until you that day comes when your CEO and your Chris Jard gets that silly smirk off his face. So when you sit down and you realise, no, we're absolutely bloody shit and we don't know what the fuck we're doing and actually make changes to decision makers, the club won't go anywhere. What they'll do is they'll get that Paul T guy in. He looks like he's just, um, you know, someone's just hit him over the head with a hammer and just said, now you're the Colton coach. He's got no clue. So he'll, he'll just bamboozle his way through. The players have no direction. Then they'll appoint some senior coach to come in, throw you know oodles of cash, and they'll um, they'll get a bit of a spike. And then as soon as they get a little bit of downturn, um, they'll sack him too. It, it, yeah, they've got to strip it all back. Yeah, I'll just I, say I, this, boys. I'll just say this. I think Kane Little could be a very important um, appointment for Carlton in this next decision because. I think um, he's the only bloke coming from the outside into that club. He'll get rid of some inbreeding. And I think um, he was he was there for the decision-making on Bolton. And um, I I wouldn't be surprised if he pulls the trigger on um, Sauce, truth be known. I yeah, reckon he's got the balls to do it. Do you yeah. reckon he's got the strength, to, the power to do it, though? Because if you looked at the press conference, the guy was nearly in tears, little. Um, and I've actually had the pleasure to meet the bloke. Um, I, he has, I don't know any inside goss on this, but... Um, I reckon he would have pushed to keep Bolton's on. Um, look, there's nothing to do. We, there's no point. We can probably keep until the end of the bye. Um, you know, hopefully we get a win or two before then to quickly change the narrative. But, you know, we'll let everyone know. Because they could. you know what would have been better for that club? I reckon Little would have been smart. He would have gone, you know what? We sack him now. We put an interim coach in. Um, the list is a freaking shambles. There's no game plan, whatever it is. Get Bolton at the end of the bye. We'll announce that Bolton won't be the coach at the end, um, next year, but Bolton will coach the rest of the year out. That would have been a better, like we did with the Geish, if you know what I mean. Um, but um, yeah, I don't think Little has the strength. I reckon it's too ingrained, you know, the um, Le Duduches and the Juds and the Sauce, and there's too much. They need to 
Yeah, no, nah, there's just too much for him to fight against. So that club Colton will go nowhere. Will... Yeah, sorry, they, you go, you they go. Agree. Yeah, they, they won't go anywhere as long as Stephen Silvani is their list manager. I mean, he's got an absolute hard on for you know GWS, you know youngsters that are constantly injury prone, and he's given up first round picks for them, and they they're only playing three or four games a season. How the hell are Colton supposed to improve if they're throwing out you know first round draft picks that are usually that are top three? you know, number one, number two, or number three for players who are playing four games a season, which means that they're not getting the talent in that they need. And, you know, he's just denying them, you know, rightful progression because he, that, the coach has no, you know, no players to, to work with because they're constantly injured. And there, I saw a comment on uh, Facebook and Michael's, you may have seen this, it was on the Nuffies page as well, but um, someone was saying that... Uh, so, so, uh, Colton should make Stephen Silvani coach for the rest of the years. He was the he was the shopper who bought the groceries. It's time for him to be the chef and get in the kitchen and actually cook with them. And I thought that was a pretty apt cool. metaphor. I mean, he's the one that's he's the one that's brought all these players in, and you know now the coaches are the one that's that's getting the chop because of he's he's buying dud product. It's, it's, it's he's he's sort of like James Heard was at Essendon. He's untouchable, and until he leaves, the club's not the club won't go anywhere. As as um as as we've seen, Richmond's been a club over the over the journey that's been racked with ruin by certain you know, power brokers within the club that have their influence. Even when you know they just pop up at the most awkward times. And you saw that tweet. I don't know if you saw that tweet by Gene Pratt's kid, where he said, you know, oh, if it was me, I'd be looking at Clarkson or Lee Matthews. Like Carlton will go nowhere until they rid their club of those um. Who, the people who treat the club like their um, personal plaything, like your Pratts, like your Mathesons, they, they actually need to get out of that club so they can yep. actually breathe and clean it up, right? Because they're the ones that, are, you know, that, it, was, it was Matheson that pulled the plug on the last coach. You know, get Malthouse. And look how that worked out. So, they, and Kane Little, he rebuilt our club finances and put us in a very good position. And I think he'll be smart enough to realise that. Yeah, he, he can rebuild Carlton if they give him what he needs. But that club will go nowhere while Jean Pratt's on the board and her dickhead kids tweeting, <laughs> get Lee Matthews back for Christ's sakes. Speaking, yeah, true. Of, speaking of tweeting, enough about <laughs> Carlton and a bit of uh, self-inflation here on my behalf, because I don't do that all that often. You, you guys obviously saw my very, very witty banter title thread on the board and, I, and the tweet I put out. Did you all see that? Yep, yep, yep. yep. I'm, well, cu- we're, I'm curious to see if long supporter... Uh, read and what he made of that uh, banter thread if he read it <laughs> no he's giving us nothing um so anyway the oh, sorry, no, sorry. Apologies. sorry boys i actually have you forgot you're the geelong supporter <laughs> <laughs> he did he forgot I, uh... he forgot character <laughs> sorry I... <laughs> meow um, truth, truth be known i've been that busy with work i haven't been on the board much this week i've been that sort of snowed in um, oh, you'll like this one i missed then. it so the banter oh, I like title, the title I went with on, on the Monday, and I tweeted it as well, is I'm, I'm probably going to end up singing it, which is going to be a, a Tiger cast first, but you just can't help but not sing it. It's the, the yeah, old... Yeah, well, join in though. Feel free to join in so I don't sound like a complete dickhead. So I went with uh, put your elbow in, pull your elbow out, meow, meow, put your meow, elbow meow, in meow, and meow, wave meow, it all meow, about. Meow, meow, you meow, do meow. the Gary Ablett and you turn around. That's what it's all about. I thought I was pretty happy with my work. I, I tweeted the other, mentioned the other mod saying that's a pretty sharp title, fellas. And uh, later on today, I'll, yeah, not long ago, before I was on my way home, get a message on Twitter that it's uh, exploded a little bit on Facebook. And I think the Nuffy page has picked it up and it's got about 2,500 likes and all the other various Richmond Facebook pages have got it. So for anyone out there trying to take credit for it, back off. That chant was mine. <laughs> Uh, I don't get Back to off. claim fame very often, and it's just a bit of a laugh. So people saying, "Oh, we can't do that. We can't sing that." It wasn't intended for anyone to sing at the game. Although if it happens, I'll be bloody happy because it, it's it'd be an exceptional effort. But yeah, so uh, just a creator, just a lyrical artist, I am just with my creations. Well, what, Mate, what you'd have after that part is you'd go, "Oh, zero wikis. Oh, so, oh yeah, zero, zero wikis. wikis. <laughs> <laughs> he get to <laughs> Michael Christian sucks you off. <laughs> Something like that. Again. You're lucky you didn't use the term green maggot. Oh, I like, would have been suspended. You know? Mate, you would have been suspended or there would have been like a, a law. How stupid was that? Like, seriously, yeah. embarrassment. Yeah, pretty bad. When I read it, I'm, someone made a good point that if it was overheard by, say, a security guard a little bit 
a way that they might have thought it was another word that rhymed with mega. I don't want to say because it is offensive. Um, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. Um, but, a bundle of was, sticks? Yeah, yeah. So, and I thought, okay, that yeah. might be an actual plausible explanation if that is the case. But if they were legitimately kicked out and suspended for saying green maggot, that's pretty disgraceful. And to be honest, if they keep doing that, there's going to be very low crowd numbers at games going forward. And that's not just hey. us, that's all teams, really. Yeah. Because... This is the biggest... This is the biggest thing, you know, if with the umpires, they're, they're not full time professionals. So, you know, obviously you're going to have that inconsistency with, um, you know, interpretations. But also, if you do your job poorly, people are going to let you know about it. So the AFL thinking, you know, banning down, uh, you know, umpire abuse from crowds, how else are the AFL going to take notice that the crowd doesn't like the way the game's being officiated unless the crowd actually vocalises their disapproval? You can't shelter them and, you know, deny fans, you know, pulling up people, you know, who aren't doing an excellent job where they're supposed to be doing. It's it's just wrong. If someone's doing If someone's doing a shit job, tell them about it. Don't just shield them because it just doesn't lead to improvement at all. Uh, interesting to note. In, interesting to note. The NRL had this problem with the umps last year. They had a bad year. So now this year they've gone like the um, NFL model in America. They're actually holding presses and they're going through decisions yeah, and like they're that. actually admitting fault. And apparently it's working very well. The rugby. So the umpires are coming out going, "Yeah, we got this wrong. This is what we thought," and they're explaining it, and people are accepting it. Whereas the AFL just treat us. Um, well, they treat your team, Richmond. And your supporters like this. My team Geelong, they treat pretty well. But, um, but you know, I mean, the, the AFL, which has this no fault cause, where they just say, no, 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 we reviewed the tapes and it was correct. Like they're just politicians' answers, and they're treating people like dickheads, and people don't like to be treated like dickheads. But even so, the see, one for me, from this weekend, and I know you know we're not all the biggest fans of Collingwood, but you have to call it how it is. I mean, they got robbed of a, a goal that shouldn't have been paid a goal, and Chris Main touched the ball. So the AFL come out and admit that they made a mistake. But then in the next breath, blame it on a technical fault. It's like, how about you just say you made a mistake and leave it at that? But it just uh, blows my mind that all everyone watching at home who had it on Fox Footy saw that replay and knew it was touched, and the reviewer didn't have access to it. Like, how do we get to that kind of stage? Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, if just remember 2017, right? We got pinged for six. Um, remember, I don't know how many Richmond games um, any listeners have watched, hopefully a lot, if it's a lot of Tiger supporters, but if you guys can remember back 2017, we were getting reviewed nearly every goal that we were kicking was getting bloody reviewed. And uh, I remember one famous um, review, it ended up coming out that we had six reviews and four of them, the AFL came out where they said, no, they're wrong. And I think one of the last games we had in that year, um, it got to a point where they actually changed the decision. No, we can't review it after every goal. Um, they made a change of how they're going to officiate it because it became farcical. See, for me, as a as a supporter, I don't trust the AFL anymore. I don't trust the umpiring department anymore. And I don't think I'm alone in this. Like, when you start seeing sides, like, I feel for Collingwood, Jerry, in that one instance, that one isolated instance. But then I've lived through, we're seeing them concede only six free kicks to our 26. Concede, see them concede only eight free kids, kicks to Carlton's 25. Um, see them again, teams getting just brutally favoured. And when, as a neutral, watching a game between Collingwood and um, Carlton, and I despise both clubs, I had no skin in, the, in, in that game at all. And you could see decisions being made clearly to bend over one side and favour another and the non-calls. Um, and, I, you know, I, I'm passionate with Richmond, so whenever I see non-calls done with us, you believe it gets screwed, and I'm the same feeling. But seeing, like, Geelong getting grossly favoured with bullshit non-calls. Um, yeah, and, 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 yeah, but then <laughs> other sides, like um, like us or, like, for example, Bulldogs get shafted. Um, Frio, funny enough, get shafted when they play down here. Um Interstate clubs do get shafted when they play down here. It's it's a farce, and and it, you know where for me it's symptomatic of the tribe MRO and the judiciary how they make decisions. Um, generally, you know if you're having a good year is if the, the calls being made on suspensions and all that are fairly well common sense. Here it's just Wobby's world, mate. Like when Dustin Martin got pinged for um, a, a rule that Michael Christensen just pulled out of his ass. The, yes, it was light contact, but the potential to cause injury, I've graded it as, as um, a, a medium impact. Um, and because of the look of the game, we're going to give him um, two weeks. 
Um, that, that's unprecedented. And you could tell for me just, look, um, I know what I'm getting. Someone's pissing down, on my, pissing down my back and calling it rain. Um, I, AFL must have got involved and said, no, we need to make Dustin Martin pay. Make him an example. And then you've had glaring for, um, things that cause more damage. And the biggest one for me was Dangerfield. Off the ball. Wax the boa in the guts. Then follows up with another whack, clips him on the forehead, drops him to the ground. Now, um, the guy Dusty hit the shoulder on, didn't drop, didn't fall down, got up, ran to his position. They turn around and just find him. They didn't say, well, no, is that a look we like for the game? People whacking other blokes off the side of the ball. Yeah, that must be okay. Did that potentially could cause serious injury? Oh, must not have. And when they did that call, I knew something's rot- rotten in Chinatown. And our CEO, Gil... Who's in freaking China has no fucking idea what's going on. He's he's a space cadet, and now you've got yeah. now you've got the the competition evolving into the GFL. You've got um, you know you know. Uh, sorry, I'm going to go on a rant. I'm trying not to go on a rant, but I can't help myself. <laughs> when you have when you have you know when we have a democracy because we make sure that the decision makers the per, the where the ultimate power is filtered through other people, so you don't have loyalties only to one source. Um, what I mean by that as an analogy to football clubs is we've now got the AFL, the governing body, is got um, Gary Hocking is uh, is Geelong. You've got um, you've got you know important people within the AFL that they're clearly biased to Geelong. Um, and there's, and they actually came out and changed the rules this year, the 666, right? And Gary Hocken was on, I know he drove off the road. SEN, he, dead set, and I'm going to ad-lib here. But he basically said, yeah, we, we changed the rule to defeat a method of play that was performed last year. Now, you don't have to be a brain surgeon to know that method of play was our formations that we used to do, um, how we used to really defend the um, the first the first contact um the first contested ball, you know mm. what I mean? So they actually literally went and targeted a system of play. Fuck disadvantaging the clubs that spent money, resources, building a list to do that style of play. They said, Gary Hawking's got nut nah, stuff that. We're going to squash it. And guess who it favoured? It favoured teams with um, a forward line with a, uh, a leading forward um, and with your Hawkins. And then they got Dalhouse in. They knew the rub of the green before the rule got changed. I, I, they, it's common knowledge within the industry that Geelong got the heads up. Um, that's why they got the recruits in. When people go, what the heck are you getting these recruits in for? Because they knew what the rule was going to do because they've been given some inside word. And now they want to add an extra six premierships to that club. And I mean, then, yeah. I mean, oh. Geelong, Geelong get looked after easily. I mean, you have a look when they introduced that whole, uh, you know, um, you have to. You can trade future draft picks, but you had to have taken. You have to take at least two two first round draft picks every four years. There was a period there where Geelong traded their first round throughout three or four years in a row, and like, they changed the rule. They, yeah, they changed the rule again, but Geelong had to ask for special permission, and they got they got granted straight away because the AFL said it was fine. I mean, I don't understand that. Is first you say you have to take two in four years. Geelong have taken one, and you're still letting them trade future picks again. Like, how was that? You know, it's just the Geelong effect. They bring rules in for Geelong because they get looked after. But that that Dangerfield, dis- back on that Dangerfield decision, that was disgraceful because De Boer came out and said that Dangerfield clipped him in the head. That was De Boer's, you know, statement after the game. Just It just clipped me. But Christian came out the week after and said there was no contact made whatsoever. But, you know, previously he said in that Dusty incident that, you know, they had to take the testimony of the, of the victim. Like, how can you pull, pull that out for one player and then completely disregard what the other player says when it comes to a, a completely separate incident? Like, it just makes no sense. There's two different um, interpretations and, uh, applied to different clubs depending on how the AFL sees you. It's, it's just completely ridiculous. And I don't want to sound like I'm just slagging off Geelong. Like, at the end of the day, it could be in any other club, but it's clear what's going on with Geelong. But my main thing is if a, if we say, if a bloke, if a player hits another bloke in the head, you're done, that's how it should be. Mm-hmm. It shouldn't be this um, horses for courses, but lies. Like, they, they lie. They, they, they come out when Ablett... Um, Went off his line and elbowed. Um, the, oh, Sam right. Yeah, yeah, in the head. Oh. And they tried to say it wasn't much impact. 
No, hold on. He went off his line. He intentionally raised his elbow, and he, he hit him in the head. If Dusty, yeah. if, if if you want that, and, and what really got me angry, um, really, really got me angry, Gary Hocken, Hockey, you know when Soldo, you had that little dwarf from Hawthorne jump in Soldo's face. So what he did is just lifted his arm up. And it elbowed um, Warple, Warple, that's the guy's name, in yeah. the in the in the head. Minimal damage, if any. The guy ended up playing the rest of the game. But Gary Hawking got on the media and said, "We have to made an example of a nine-game player." Said, "You know, it was off the ball, and you know, we need to we need to get rid of things like that." And I'm sure everyone agrees. But just two weeks before, a week beforehand, Ablett hits a bloke in the head. Then not two weeks before that, does it again. And then you had the danger. He never made that call. But because it's a Richmond bloke, a young kid, an easy target, Wheatley and Hocking, they they, they go perpetuate this narrative. Um, and it's pathetic. Um, it's what most people don't believe in the competition anymore. Like, if it wasn't for the Tigers, I wouldn't watch AFL. I'll, I'll tell you the truth. It's sad. I used to watch every game. Now, for me, it's... It's just corrupt bullshit. There's, you're now starting to hear about players with major betting problems. Um, our umpires are semi-professional, and people say, give all these bullshit excuses. Oh, we can't. What do they can do? We can't put them full time. Hello? You've got semi-professionals that if you're not protecting the code, because people can actually go to them, how would you like to earn 500000 in this game? Oh, well, I've got my full-time job. If it does blow up on me, I've got something to fall back on. Why not? They've got no risk to do it because some of the decisions are really fucking weird. Yeah. Some of the blatant on course make you – my old man when he was alive used to look at something, you know, that guy's on the take because there's no way you can make that decision unless you want to alter the course of it. So, yeah, it's – I never believed him. I always said, no, nah, yeah. But now I'm starting to see clear decisions like the one that happened to Collingwood. That was clearly touched. Everyone saw it was touched. Don't yeah. tell me that they could not just turn on Foxtel. They didn't have Foxtel in the in that little booth <laughs> that they've got to press the button to watch it. Um, you know, who's to say the person who makes the call wasn't pocketing an extra twenty k? Yeah. Well, yeah. The, the biggest thing, yeah, the biggest thing for me with the umpires is they have no game sense at all. They haven't played AFL before. They don't know what it's like for them. You know, for the players, you know, in in the game situation. So, if the players aren't going, if the umpires aren't going to go professional, are they going to stay like they are? I think the AFL should start hiring ex players to come in because at least they'll know, you know, what you know. They they won't be paying um, stupid frees in the game because of game sense. I mean, it was just completely stupid. Some of the frees we copped on Friday night were because the umpire had no game sense whatsoever didn't realize there was no other options or anything it's just absolutely stupid they, they need to really start looking at the this game as a whole what the situation is and pay pay free kicks based on that rather than trying to pull out these tiggy touchwood soft 50 50 bullshit ones that just rile up everyone when they're not they're not applied consistently yeah look like if we're talking about the north game um out of brown's five goals i think four of them were from free kicks um, so I just look, okay, if you're going to pay that for Brown, that's fair enough. Go, give it to him, you know. Uh, mashallah, give him five more. But look at Tom Lynch. If anyone was at the game, he was getting punched off the ball. He was getting kneed off the ball. He was getting pull, his arms pulled off the ball so he couldn't lead in the contest. And umpires, with I know because I physically saw it with my own eyes at the ground. Umpire, clear view. Staring at it and letting it go. And yeah. that for me goes, well, nah, uh, maybe it's a great narrative to have. Now, uh, North deserved to win that game. We played woefully bad. It's going to happen with, you know, when we've got, you know, six or seven young players in the game-wise experience in the side. They're going to have a, I hate using the word, I won't use soft underbelly, a, a weaker underbelly. That when it does get exposed, if our midfield's not on, it will get torn to shreds, and that's what happened. That's why our losses have been big. When our midfield can't contain, our younger guys get exposed, and then we just leak. Um, but and it didn't help having Grimes having a shocker of a of a day. And Ashbury was having a shocker. So, um, but yeah, yeah, it was one of those games, wasn't it? yeah, and people, I couldn't believe on our board. Sometimes you know I love our board, but sometimes I just I just didn't post. I, I was sick with the flu, and I thought, fuck it. You got people questioning Tom Lynch, right? Saying, oh, he's a two million dollar salary cap intake. Blah blah. Hold on. The guy's kicked over 25 goals. He hasn't played a pre-season. 
He hasn't. He he's had hardly a preseason. He's playing a, a lone hand with a um, supply from a midfield that's decimated. So the ball's coming to him, and not quality at all. No, it's but the delivery. guy is still presenting a contest. Um, our and yeah, and, and people are slagging him off on it. And sometimes I would love for a person that wants to slag off Tom, put the jumper on, play full forward at Richmond, go. See how good you go. I yeah, mean, that's, that's uh, the only way they're going to appreciate it. And, uh, Mr. I mean, while we're talking about the Kangaroos game, we obviously went down by 37 points. Uh, Mr. Edge Long support, did you, did you watch that game? And what did you think of that one? Actually, I did. I didn't have anything on that Friday night, so I thought I'd watch it. Oh, good. Um, well, I think uh, what, what happened with your beloved Tigers was what you see with young teams. Um, you do get inconsistent performances. And I think we're seeing that we've got to, after the last two years we've had, we need to actually, sorry, you, you need to adjust <laughs> what you're seeing because um, what, you know, you remember Bolter, Stack, Baker, all those guys are now getting a lot of football into them and they're going to start tiring. Um, I think when, ironically, in the second half of the year, so I just saw that Kane Lambert's out now till after the bye. Yep. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what you're going to see now is as these kids get tired, probably the, the Calvary comes in the back end of the year and actually will help us out. So yeah, I agree I, with I, that. I think, I think we've just got to get through these next three games or this next, you know, this next month. So Adelaide and Adelaide, Geelong, my team, go Cutters, <laughs> on Friday night. Um, then you've got the bye. Then there's probably one more. Uh, interesting to note, I, I believe you had a random text today Michael's on a theory about I, Nick Loston. That that might I, be interesting. I did. I'll uh, I'll just bring that up now. Very interesting. You you mentioned that the the random text come from a regular on the podcast. You might have heard of him, Captain Blood Seventeen. Uh, he tends to think that Vloston will play on the ball this week, and because we'll have Cotran, Prestia, Martin, Caddy, Vloston, plus some role players going through there, that will be a bit more competitive. Uh, and that who did, who did he say will go back? I think that. Young, or young Shane Edwards will play the intercept role, and he's even called for Menadry to come back in to slot in on the halfback flank. So, the interesting calls by Captain Blood. We're we're getting exposed in our back line. Is um, we've got Ryan Garthwaite, right? We're gonna we're gonna persist with him, right? He's 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 an, he's he, and I, I I hope we do when we will. But see, our Achilles heel, and I, I hate zoning, but David Asprey, if he gets exposed, um, we crack open like a watermelon. So. Um, because it's just too much just to leave on, um, on Dylan Grimes and Broad always punches above his weight. So, with moving Vloston out, um, putting Shane Edwards in, he's not a good one on. He's a great one on one player, defensively in a midfield contest. You know what I mean? Like if you know the ball's there, they two players run at it. He generally beats you more than that. But the ball coming in high, Shane Edwards has to. I don't know. Um, he gets exposed a little bit, but. Look, for us, it comes down to midfield. If our midfield can hold Geelong's, um, we'll win. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. But I think that's the, that's, that's the problem you're facing, is a lack of midfield depth with Lambert out. That's so I right. Lost, I, I think, so I think what has happened by that game I happened to watch a couple of weeks ago with the Hawthorne when Lost went in the middle, I think Richmond might have got a couple of answers with that. I think that might have given them a bit of food for thought in the second half of the year as we try and improve our midfield Sorry, Richmond trying to improve their <laughs> midfield depth. <laughs> and I think, I, I think, I believe the forecast is for a dry night on Friday. So I believe Richmond will look to bring in some runners. And I reckon we're getting killed in the ground ball. So I think Jack, uh, I think Graham will come in to help yeah. with the ground ball. He's desperately think, needed. He's yeah. desperately needed. I think, I think manager will come in for extra run. And I think Rioli comes in for extra run. I think, and... I think they'll be the three. I was, I was tipping, sorry, the, the random text was tipping four changes, but I think they'll go with three changes. And, uh, um, the I Graham think one, Higgins. I think, is a lock. Like, when you look at their midfield of Selwood, Dangerfield, uh, Kelly, Duncan, Guthrie, they're all, like, solid types. And, like, not last week, North Melbourne realistically just bullied us off the ball, which they've happened to do yeah. quite a few times. And we're just a little bit light on, and Jack Graham adds that strength. And I know people will crack the shit that he doesn't get you know, 25, 30 touches, but it's not really his role. He's just, he needs to just be that extractor and add a bit more toughness into that midfield area. Yeah. He's a defensive I mean, mid. He's a def- he got 10 tackles in the VFL, Graham. 
is a defensive. That's what we're screaming out for. What? But CB, what I would do differently from yours. Who's CB? I'll, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, mate. Um, okay, I'll just call you Geelong. I'll just call you Flog to you because you're because you're an opposition supporter. So Flog, what I would do, mate, differently is I would put. I wouldn't get Manager in. I would bring Graham in. I would leave Lostin in the back line. I would put um, Graham in the midfield. I would push Ellis back. Um, to the halfback flank. And you know what I would do? Outside the box, I would put Shane Edwards on the wing. Because how that 6-6 rule is, he's so creative. He's just so creative. So he can, he can, and he's smart. He can read the play. So if he, he'll know when to run back or when to run forward or when to run into the centre to help, um, you know, get the first receive. So, but we'll see what we come up with because we're going to, um, if we're on, I reckon we'll beat him. Um, They've had – they're much like Hollywood, funny enough. They give you a look. Um, and if you're on, um, you can get on get on top of them. But if, you, if you're if you off your game slightly, they'll punish you. Yeah, As, I know as we... a long supporter, I feel our weakness could be in the ruck. I think our rucks are only average. And I think Soldo has a chance to break even with the rucks, giving us a 50-50 shot at the ground ball. Yeah, that's going to be important. It's funny, yeah, it's funny how we've all got different – Sort of ideas on what, how we should approach, you know, the lineups. Because I'm, I'm completely different to you two. I wouldn't bring Graham in myself. I would probably look at bringing Townsend in, moving and moving Caddy into the middle. I think you know, with Caddy with that big body, will probably and he get he gets a lot more a lot more of the ball than what um, Graham does too. And I'd also wouldn't bring in Manager. I'd bring I'd give uh, Paddy Nash a go probably. Play him on the wing or half forward. That, that's they're probably the two changes that I, I would bring in because at least um, T- Townsend actually offers us a uh, scoreboard presence as well, where Graham really doesn't. He hasn't really hit the scoreboard much over the, over the past few games he's played. So I think Townsend and and Nace should be two that we should bring in. We could maybe bring Townsend and uh, bring Townsend, Graham and Nace in. Obviously Higgins hasn't had a great year this year. I think maybe uh, Higgins out for Nash. His Nash has got a, a lovely left foot and has been hitting the scoreboard heavily at VFL level. Can find the football, has got pace, so that gives us another runner as well. And then you know, as I said, you've got the, the big bodies in maybe Graham and Townsend in as well. Yeah, true. No, good call. Look, I love Townsend. I hope we can get him in. Graham we need, um, just because of his defensive he's a big body and he's a defensive mid. Um and he can kick goals. It's just unfortunately because of uh, he, with his injury and we haven't been able to develop him into an attacking midfielder. Um, but I look, I like Graham. Um, but yeah, no, nah, spot on. Good points, man. It's funny. It's with all these injuries we've got. It highlights how far as a club we've come because the, the even the the ins that you're bringing in, they're all good quality. They all have quality about them. Um, it's not like back in the old days we're talking about, you know, oh, we're going to be bringing Proctor or Ron Jeez. Bottas. Or... <laughs> <That's a throwback. laughs> wow. Oh, jeepers. All right, so we skin horror stories. Oh, Steve, Ryan, Steven remember Zell. him? We like I Ryan because he can run fast. <laughs> oh, I, my God. I, I, just, I just vomited, like, seriously. <laughs> I mean, why, why don't we just bring back in Cam Howitt, the wing as well? Oh, Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. Oh, when were you <laughs> shot? Yeah. Bring back Jeremy Webley on the half back line. Oh, you know what's no, funny? Mitch, no, Mitch Farmer. Mitch Farmer. <laughs> but you know what's funny? You know what's Bring funny, though, Adam. guys? These yeah. names, these names, uh, the number one picks are Colton. These, these, that's <laughs> literally, if you think about it, the way they're performing, we're talking about the Hides, and they're all players, you know, they're all like nothing picks, but that's how their number one picks are performing. At Carlton, and it just makes me so fucking happy <laughs> that that's the position that they. And I hope they never come up because they're a cheating club. I'm sorry, Carlton supporters. You know, my wife buries for Carlton. You know, but you know, I just hope you guys never come up. I hope you guys you stay there for 25 years because then I'll turn to you. I've got a mate of mine, my father-in-law actually. This Carlton, he's Italian. Oh, you should stop smiling because I smile every time I watch a Carlton game. Stop smiling. I go listen. All I got to say to you, mate. Um, is uh, oh, I've just forgot. Uh, <laughs> Jesus, I've forgotten his name. Who's the, who's the um, rich? I've burned it out of my brain. Who's that rich? Um, the Colton trade that we had, Yaron. All I say to him, I look at him and go, Yaron. That's all I say. For Yaron, for knowing what he was like and trading him, 
and without you know giving us the full story and the poor guys, what's happened's happened. I hope you have twenty five years of this seriously. Then we'll see what your supporters are made of. Yeah, it would be interesting to see how they go with that. Um, back to the game this week, though. the The pressure we showed last week against the Roos was pretty non existent, I thought. Um, but like we've kind of touched on, I think a lot of it comes down to that our young guys couldn't really stay up and about all those weeks in a row, so they're bound to have an off game. Grok, how high does our pressure level have to be to be a chance against Geelong? Because if there's a, if there's going to be a team that's going to exploit us and open us, open us up if we're not on, it's going to be them. Yeah, I mean, you have a look at the, the heavy losses that we've had this year, you know, against the Pies, against GWS, against the Bulldogs, and now against North Melbourne, the four losses that we've had. They've all come against sides that have completely smashed us through the middle. You know, the midfield just getting on top. And, you know, yeah, we for, for a period of that, we didn't have Cochin and Dusty was out, or he was, you know, he had niggles, and we, we had the younger players in there, but... We, we really need to start working on our effort. That was the biggest thing against North Melbourne, our just lack of, you know, pressure and harassing and the, the lack of uh, the lack of intent to actually tackle. We sort of reverted back to that 2016 style where we chose to actually corral rather than, you know, just attack the attack the player with the ball and tackle. We, we sort of stayed off and, and, you know, didn't really want to go in for the tackle. And that, for me, that, that just showed the intent that we had on, on Friday night. It was nowhere near, near good enough. And coming up against a side that has Dangerfield, that has Tim Kelly, that has Salwood, and that has Ablett, and then, of course, you got Mitch Duncan on the outside, who I rate highly, and Dalhouse, who can go through there. We really need to bring a, bring a pressure game. We we need to tackle. We cannot corral like we did with with North. We we need to put physical presence on that Geelong midfield because class wise, they're a level. They're probably two levels above what we are right now, especially with Lambert out and Cochin underdone coming back off, you know, seven eight weeks being out. So we really need to make sure that our effort is is on, you know, is is on point because it's it's one of those things where um, that they're just going to get a lot of the ball. That's what the Geelong needs to do, and they're very explosive. Tim Kelly and Dangerfield, they break tackles like anything. They, you know, they're very powerful, quick, explosive type of players, and we can't afford to have the amount of broken tackles against Geelong as we did against North Melbourne. And that was that was the biggest that was the frustrating thing against North Melbourne. You got all these young players, these skinny frames, you know, Jared Polek's not exactly the, the bulkiest player. Uh, Taron Thomas isn't the bulkiest player. Kane Turner isn't the bulkiest player. They're very slight framed players, but they were just breaking through our tackles with ease, the ones that we actually laid and it was just a disgrace that we lost the actual possession count and contested possessions, uncontested possessions, and lost the tackle count as well by 17. That's t- To lose both the, con- the both the possession count, uncontested and contested, and the tackles, that just shows we weren't hard enough for long enough. That, that was completely disgraceful. And if, we, if that happens against Geelong, I wouldn't be surprised to see us get blown out by 10 goals minimum. Yeah, agree. Um, before I get a tip on this game from you guys, I also want to celebrate Sydney Stack winning the NAB Rising Star Award. That's back-to-back NAB Rising Stars for us, which is great. Um, Stack's been absolutely unbelievable this year, I reckon. I mean, we all know, we've all seen him play and the, the body of work he's put in, as the uh, NAB selectors like to say. He just keeps impressing, I think, week on week. He doesn't look out of his depth at all. He's got courage, he's got skill, uh, burst of speed. He's just fitting really, really well at Tiger 71. Yeah, no, I love the kid. Um, but just really, Grok, um, we played hurt. It, for me, it looked like last week we played hurt. we come off Essendon game that was in the wet, it was in the slog, and it looked like the boys were all sore. Um, when Rioli was dropped, was a sign to me that we're saving him for the Geelong game. Um, and and, I, and his VFL form sort of backed that up for me. Like, he didn't go in as hard as he should have. And even when he has a bad game, he normally tackles, and he didn't do it either at, at uh, the VFL. So... You're right. I agree with every point you did. It was disgraceful. We didn't. We played hurt. Um, what I mean by that, not as an excuse. We just didn't want to put body on because um, we were sore. So um, hopefully they just refreshed him, mate. They let him just rest up the whole week um, and get him pride for the Cats. But I agree with you, mate. If we're not on, we'll get done by 10 goals. And Stack, mate, 
he's a he's a champ. He's just got heart. He's got ticker. That kid, and I wish him all the best. I hope he um has a two hundred plus game career with us. And I loved his wording. He said, "I owe Richmond. They're like family to me now because they back me in, and that put a smile on my face." Yeah, I think that's really important. That you know, we just throw him that lifeline, and I think he's just, he's going to stay loyal and and prove that he was worth taking the risk on, which is good. All right, we'll um, go around the room and get a, a tip on the game before we get to some <laughs> some other. Yep. Topics. Uh, juicy Grok. news. Yeah, juicy, yeah. Juicy. Grok, what's your tip for the game, including margin? Uh, I, th- I think Geelong by uh, twenty nine points. I, I think it'll be a comfortable win for them. I just think their midfield will will just grind away, be too much for us in the end. Fair enough. You're not coming back on anytime soon. Yeah, uh, Tiger yeah. seventy one. <laughs> <laughs> mate, if no. I could slap someone through a screen, you're <laughs> killing me, mate. You're killing me. No, um, I, I don't see where you're coming from. Yeah, I see it. It's, look, uh, not to use my logical side of my brain, right? Use the passionate side of my heart. I reckon Richmond by, you know what? I'm going out there by 32 points. Oh, I reckon shit. how the game will perform. <laughs> yeah, Grok. Seriously, I reckon we'll go in hard and fast in the first quarter. We'll actually start bashing. See, the two players you mentioned, Kelly and Dangerfield, they have one tendency to do something if they're pressured. They turn the ball over. Um, and in the G, we know the G better than any other side. Um, so if we can just repeat what we did at the um, preliminary final, you know, get that in their heads, you know, come up. If, they, if they're struggling by midway through three quarter time, they might open their legs and we just play our stride in. So Tigers by 32. Uh, Geelong supporter, what do you think? I think Patrick Dangerfield is wonderful. Um, Gary <laughs> Ablett is just the best. Joel Selwood, Captain Courageous. He's going to be in there mopping up the ball. Um, Mitch, and Tom, Mitch Hawkins, Tom Hawkins is such a fair player. Like it's only justice that he got off. Oh. Um, I'm so glad. Uh, yep. I think the cats by 45. <laughs> well, you might not be far off, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I think like we spoke about, a lot of it hedges on what our midfield does. If we don't apply pressure and play remotely close to last week, it's going to get ugly really quick, just because they've got a lot of talent in their side. But um, I, I like to think that we can pull a rabbit out of the hat and I'll, I'll say the Tigers by eight points in a, in a close one. Good man. Uh, Good man. All right, now to some more pressing issues, TIG71. You've um, come yeah. with some information. Yeah, I have. Look, I've held, I've sort of let a few people know that I trust at the start of the year. Um, I'll, I'll, actually, hold on. I just want to make sure I don't talk out of school. All right. Okay. Um, I let a few people know early on about players I hear. That's what I do, right? And I've got three blokes that I really, really trust when, and what's good, two of them know each other, but um, the third one doesn't know the other two. I don't know that doesn't make any sense. But what actually happens is when they all agree on someone or they all tell me something, then I know it's, it's got a little bit more weight. That's why I'm, I hate tooting my own horn, but I'm uncannily accurate. That's like no one called Shaky, I did, you know, and I could go on and on. But I've, I've had a couple, I had heard about Cunnington uh, a while back. I put it on the boards, da 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 and I think now with the coach being sacked probably is where it's coming from, the noise I was hearing, that there was issues at that club. So um, I reckon that's a watch in space. I wouldn't be surprised if um, Cunnington comes to the Tigers and we organise a uh, – we'll give them a pick, um, our first pick, or don't screen, guys. I'm just spitballing, whatever the pick's worth that they're happy with, and they do a subsidy on the wage. Um that could, that could probably work. But the one that got me excited, um, actually, the other one that I know is going to happen, um, mate, I know it's going to happen. Like, it's, the three of them have come up. Don't be surprised if Cruz is playing for Richmond next year. Um, and people are probably going, Cruz, huh? why has that got you excited? Um, I got told uh, from one of my guys that would generally know about four months ago, five months ago, that he's not enjoying his time at um, Carlton. And if certain things, if they don't, get off to a good start, he's going to want to leave. Um, hey, hey and Tiggs, he, yep. you, is it true we've been sort of keen on him for two years? Because I've, we I've been. heard we've been, we've been keen on him for a while to come over. Yeah, but he's a loyal guy. Um, and yep. he, yeah, and he wanted, he believed in the message that when Bolton and all that sort of stuff, right? Um, and also he feels that he owes a bit of a debt to the club because of his injury history. Um, that's what got sort of fed back to me. And that's also open common knowledge now that's all on the media and stuff. But what I've heard about five months ago that if it, um, he wants success, 
Right? He wants to enjoy his football. He's he feels he's repaid enough to the club, but he wants to enjoy his football. And there's a few players at Carlton that just want to enjoy football again. They do not like playing football. So um, that's why I mentioned to a few of my close mates on the board um, this about five months ago, four months ago, and. Then the year started off as it has, and it's sort of going, oh, okay, that's giving more weight to what I was told. And I got off the – before Bolton sacking, this is two weeks ago, uh, my mate came to me and said, I reckon a cruise is, uh, cruise is going to happen. I said, why, what have you heard? He said, I can't tell you, but no, where I got it from, it's going to happen. I said, okay, I'm stoked because I love him at the club to play with Koch and enjoy his bit of his football. So um, I reckon – the media hasn't got wind of it, but I reckon something's going to happen there. Um, maybe there's a few place, players that they feel like they're going to lose, and that's why they've sort of killed Bolton off really quickly. But um, because there's noise, I don't know nothing about Carlton, but the mail I'm getting, this is completely outside of the um, the four walls of Carlton, but there's cliques in that club. Bolton had favourites. Things you wouldn't expect of such a nice guy. That, But, yeah, it not you could be a nice guy, but not be a really good manager of people, and I think that's parts that's driving out a few of their stars but Cruiser, yeah um, playing for Richmond I reckon that's going to happen um, so watch his space but the other one that really got me excited was an interstate mid um, bit of context for the new listeners um, I mentioned Brad Crouch um, before anyone else before the media before anybody else and everyone said to me oh you're full of shit ticks 71 ah punt road in went um, some some of their posters foaming in the mouth saying oh you're full of shit um then the club came and said, oh, yeah, we actually rang Adelaide, but we did it because of the tweet. That doesn't happen. Clubs don't um, ring other clubs based on an anonymous tweet. The mail was right. Um, but obviously, um, it just wasn't the right time. I'm hearing, and just sit down, guys, hope you're ready. I've heard from really reliable sources that a particular midfield at West Coast by the name of Gaff is not happy at West Coast. Now, I know he signed a six-year deal or whatever it was. Um, and that his management management have come to us, has sounded us out. Now, that's all I know. I'm not saying it's 100% lock it's going to happen. But um, it's strange. that I'm um, adamant. I, I, I actually um, believe uh, what I was told, that they've reached out to us. So just watch his space when it comes to Gaff. I don't think he's as happy as um, – now, I don't know Perth. I'm not from Perth. Anyone that listens over Perth, what rumours are you hearing, might back that up. Um, but, um, yeah, it was strange. Apparently, the management um, came has come to us come to us a few times. Um, how we would get the deal done, I'm not sure. Um, you know, I know Bolton's trade bait. Um, I've sort of been – you know, clubs have been hunting after him. We've got Ellis – might even mean would you let a stack go to WA? No, nope. you know I'd, I'd probably prefer to go if we go on WA plays. Um, Nathan Broad probably go back, and then we can move maybe Garthwaite into that third tall intercepting role. Yeah, but you know, who knows? I'm not saying stacks been off of a trade, guys. So don't start screaming, don't <laughs> post crazy stuff on the boards. Oh, I'm not saying that. I'm spitballing here, but I know Gas Management has approached our club. I know this is fact, and that's the key right. part to this because, yeah, like, like I said, from a six year deal perspective, we wouldn't. I mean, no club would approach him out of the blue. I wouldn't have thought because they're like, right. signed for six years, but. If he's disgruntled, I mean, it'll take an almighty effort to get anything done from any club yeah. for someone who signed for six years. But if a player wants out, more often than not, it happens. So that would be a really interesting one if that uh, come to life and picked up some legs. And my God, would yeah. there be an epic meltdown, big footy? Yeah, oh, it'd be awesome. But I, so my feelings are Cunnington, if North wants to um, regenerate, which I think they'll do, Cunnington's a real viable option for us. I think, and if, um, and I think he will come to us if. North crossed that bridge, which I think they've already done. They just haven't said it yet. Um, Brad Crouch, guys, I keep on hearing his name, just leaving it out there. But, yeah, I, I had to share what I heard about Gaff because it was just too good not to share to you guys. I gave you my word. If I hear it, um, I'll share it um, regardless of what people think of me. And I just heard his management's come to us. So, so am I, like, essentially, essentially am I being, we're just... Sorry, can I say, Michaels, yeah. when I did this with Shaki, I did it like six months before anyone knew and people first said, oh, you're fucking kidding, Mick. I mean, Tig's 20, um, 71. You're kidding. He's the number one draft pick. They'll never get rid of him. I got, I copped all that, right? And then six months later, oh, shit. <laughs> He's it's been gone. nominated. And then he came in the top, yeah, the Tiger stuff. So um, validate everything I said. So it's the same side of fuel for me is that the gas management's come to us. 
So, so essentially, we're just sort of surveying our midfield options with the Crouch, Cunnington, Gaff. Well, he probably. I said it at the start. But... I said it on the boards. I said our targets are we need we need to really reinforce our midfield. We're recruiting for the now. We're recruiting for the now. We from what I'm, we've got a four win, four year window where we know we can actually make some real solid success. We're not going to forget about the future. We've got a really good young future list, and we're going to add to it still. Just look at our VFL side in the Herculean work that they're doing. But we're recruiting for the now, and we're desperate for a high quality ruck. Um, because what separates us from West Coast, what separates us from Collingwood, what separates us from the GWS? Uh, now I love Nank. Right, so don't start foaming at me. But we don't have an elite ruck, someone that warries the opposition. Yeah, he, um, Cruz can go forward as well. I've liked him oh, for a while. Oh, mate, could you just imagine Cruz and Nank? It makes me hard. Right now, I'm going to get off. You're going to start hearing noises. But no, that <laughs> excited me. That will happen. I've got no doubt. Unless so some you, seismic. Are you as confident in the Cruiser one as you were about the Lynch one? Yeah, I am. Um, you know, actually, to put it this way, as of June. I am as confident as the Lynch one. But keep in mind, with Lynch, I knew I had a lot of backstory with it. Yeah. With this one, it's sort of just, you know, it's only been, you know, three or four months that this has bubbled across. But my mate was adamant. It's happening. Um, and then, funny enough, Bolt's got sacked this week. So, ooh, I don't know. I'm excited. Boss is so, yeah, I mean, Chris, it really gets me excited. Hey, Dibs, I'll, I'll give you one. If, I'll Go. give you one. I've seen the future for Noah Bolter if this happens. And I explain, and Michaels will back me up. I called this a week ago, two weeks ago. Noel Bolter will become a midfielder, 194, 195 centre midfielder at Richmond. He, if, that, if we hypothetically got Cruiser, he'd almost have to, because I said that to Tig Seven before he went to air, that the big concern, not concern, but it's like, how do you fit a potential of Nate Cruiser, Lynch, Rewalt, Bolter in the one side? But I know Bolter's not slow, but I think, you're, I think that would be the answer. Yeah, he'd either be a, he'd either be a uh, a wingman or he'd go back and be that third tall intercept, maybe Winger. replace. From yeah, I, I, has to, I, Winger, I don't Winger like the defensive me. idea. It has to be around the ball. And he'll he's be too, a wing. He's too athletic yeah, and I, dangerous when he's let him, got license let him to run. Run the ball. Put him on the agate. Yeah. yeah. Now you know what I'd do. I'd I'd get rid of Ellis. Ellis will be gone. Bye bye, Ellis. Bye bye, Brandon. Thank you for your service. And who takes his spot is is Bolter. He just licensed to run up that wing, get into the centre if he wants to. Um, see, Bolter, um, he's still learning so much about the game, right? He's, he's, but he's an instinct player, right? So we need to maximise his strengths, which is instinct and his agility and his speed. Um, see him outrun midfielders makes me happy. Makes me, just pretty, makes me happy, right? Can you just put him in that full time? All right, Bolter, you're in the wing. Wingmen only need team, um, possessions in the teens to have an effect. See that kick? You know, who he reminds me of. There was one player at Richmond used to play wing, outside mid winger, and had a kick as beautiful as Bolter. Not the length of it, but close. Tivendale. Now Tivendale was very hot and cold. Didn't get many possessions, but when he got that raking left foot it kick, was and, impactful. It was it, yeah. It, you you noticed it, and it worried opposition. Um, it, it was a pity our side was so shit around him. But can you imagine Bolter? That is a weapon on one one wing, and then you've got McIntosh who just fucking runs and runs and runs and runs on the other. Yeah. Oh, just yeah. And Ellis can go. Um, that's what I reckon will happen. See, Cruiser won't play all twenty three games, right? He won't play all games. So I reckon we'll get Cruiser in, play a chunk here, a chunk here. The, the chunk he's not playing shoulder will keep on coming in for his development. We keep Cruiser, what, for two, three years? I reckon he's got two, three years in it because he had all those injuries. Yeah. Um, I reckon it's going to be done, boys, and it fucking excites me. I mean, just as you're mentioning, you know, Andrew Gaff, if we do have the money to fit Gaff in, you know, say um, – we, we do offload Brandon Ellis, which I'm of the personal opinion. I think Ellis's value right now is not worth what he's on uh, on the list. Would it be worth maybe getting into the year of Patrick Cripps? Because there have been rumours that he is very, you know, unsettled at Carlton and, and want, wants out. And, you know, he's already established in Melbourne. Obviously, he's from WA and they'd be massively into him, but... With all the all the players that Freo brought in last year, you'd think that they'd struggle to to cough up the dough for him. And West Coast chasing Tim Kelly, they might not be, you know, in the role for him too. So I was thinking, what would the odds be of maybe 
you know, throwing money at Crips to try and entice him over. I don't know. Crazy stuff happens. It really just comes down to how, um, how the – if they believe what Little um, and the other higher-ups are cults and sell the players, if they believe that message. That is what's going to come down to the senior bodies um, and their, their elite players going out and staying or not. I don't think Crips will go. Um, no, but, I don't think either. Yeah, but with Gaff, look, with Gaff, I really, I brought Gaff, see, people, I know what's going to happen, because people are going to just hear Gaff, ah, Tink said, said Gaff, ah, fuck it. I know this is going to happen, right? What I'm saying is, is I can 100% confirm Gaff's management came to the club. There's I 100% in Gaff. Gaff, no, Gaff's come to us. Yeah. That's the biggest, that's the biggest thing. Gaff has come to us. Now, it might be, is there any way to... Get him out of West Coast. Can we do anything? So, does it mean it's 100% lock? No. But um, he's not in the same ballpark as Caruso in relation to how I think that's very close. Um, something will happen there. But with um, but with Gaff, yeah, Gaff's management came to us. Um, that, I've got no doubt. No doubt. In my mind, that happened. Mention, I mean, financially is the other, obviously, big oh, I don't obstacle know how we'll do to it. get. That's, yeah. I, I don't and that know would how be. And I imagine that if you know if they've come to us, I imagine that spot a large part of the conversation yeah. surrounded. Like, can you, you facilitate this? Like, what's your position? And maybe we said sorry, it's not viable at this point. I don't know who knows what was said back, but um, yeah, really interesting news on that yeah. front. I know we were the prime is his primary club of choice. If he had a choice, choice to come back to Melbourne, we would be the choice. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I posted a few names on the board that I'd heard that we have sort of had a had an interest in for a while. Um, Tiger seventy one. Have you heard any of uh, anything on those names uh, in particular? You know, Zach Jones, Adam Tomlinson, uh, Luke Dunstan, and Josh Dunkley or Libba from the Dogs. <laughs> Libba, no. Yeah, yeah, Libba last off season, yeah. Um... It was mainly Wallace, but there was, but it was more. That's why I even said it in the last podcast we had last year. I'm hearing rumours and noise, but I'm pretty good now knowing what's smoke and what's um, what's legitimate. Um, what's a smouldering fire? That's, if that makes any sense. So what's just yep. you know white noise and what's a little bit more substance to it? And I never got a read. I reckon Libba. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, that's why I never really went on the limb for Libba. But Dunkley, there's always noise about Dunkley. Um, there's always noise about him. Um, I've had one guy I trust um, uh, quite implicitly. Um, I'm just bringing it up just to make sure I've got it in front of me. Just don't want to misquote him. I won't mention who it is. Um, <clears throat> sometimes I used to pick footy message board, by the way, as my – because the guys know they can catch me on there. Um, we have um, – there is some interest between Dunkley and us. Um I haven't had yet. I said, look, I've, I haven't had that confirmed by. I've had it confirmed though, in fairness, by one of my guys, not the other two. So I'll get to work. And yeah, look, this time of year is when oh, it's, the season opens up for me. July, August, September is when it really starts to motor along. So I'll keep you up. Let's say ninety days. We can do another podcast um, when you can fit it in, um, and we can do a bit of a trade update. Yeah, no dramas. Prior to the finals or something. All right, well, there you go, Tiger folks. You've gotten some pretty exclusive trade update news from the man with all the know, Tiger 71. Thank you very much for bringing that to the table. And we'll definitely check back in uh, yeah, once it opens up a bit more and a bit more information comes to hand, no doubt. So thanks for jumping on tonight, guys. Massive thanks to Grocodoc, Tiger 71, and our special guest, our pseudo Geelong supporter, who might also have sent me a text today named Captain Blood. Thanks for coming on, fellas. Thank you for no, having us. Captain Stop. Blood. Stop that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did well to try came. and stay in character for as long as you did, to be honest. I was quite impressed by that. <laughs> I get distracted. I start reading shit online and then I sort of miss the question and I, I just, yeah, I'm no good. <laughs> no good. <laughs> No, very good. Oh, thanks, Steve, for coming on again, guys. Uh, and we'll definitely catch up again soon, no doubt, and give another update. Awesome. But, uh, hopefully we get the win this week. And until next time, go Tigers. Fantastic. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Richmond Big Footy Tiger Cast. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and YouTube so you can follow all the roasts and toasts, the reviews and previews, and all topics Richmond. Also keep an ear out for our special episodes of interviews with past players. Go Tigers.